Hi everyone. I thought I'd film myself um, making my first journal cover using a chipboard. I ordered some off of Amazon and I ordered this little sheet of Tyvek also off of Amazon. And I watched like a hundred videos to see how to do them because there are so many different ways. And I came up with this way which is pretty much the same way everybody else does. Um, I wanted to use fabric for this one because I'm a quilter, so I have like two bookcases full of fabric that I need to use up. And right now, since I'm journaling on my cutting table, I am not uh, quilting. <laughs> So as you see here, I am using that one little piece of chipboard kind of as a spacer board. Um, I've seen Manny do that. I know Artie Mays because I've been binging on hers a lot. So I kind of use that there uh, to give me a good space because you need to be able to fold those sides with it not butting up against the, the spine piece. And I'm just weighing down uh, the chipboard a bit to make sure I get a good um, connection there to the Tyvek. I was kind of, um, I was using the pencil to mark off where um, to glue. Otherwise, I'd glue that whole board and then it'd end up gluing it to the uh, table. I applied a lot because I wasn't sure how much I needed. And a little bit did slip out, you know, seep out, I guess, onto the cutting mat, but that was fine. As long as I got a good seal, I didn't want anything falling apart. And here I've picked my fabric and I've cut it one inch around all sides. I um, ironed it, I starched it, and since I had the basting spray, I used that to, um, i show a picture in a second, yeah, basting spray and the starch to get it nice and um, firm and straight. I cut off the, uh, the corners there so that it will fold nicely into nice little miter corners. That technique kind of works better if I was using um, paper. I've seen that done, but with fabric, it didn't really matter bending it like that as long as I got good contact. That's why I was really making sure I put the glue up against the chipboard. So I guess if I was using paper, that would matter a whole lot more. Now when I'm folding there, um, I'm trying to make sure I get the edges uh, pinched in so that it folds nicely. There we go. Sorry for that glare. I I can't seem to get a perfect uh, lighting and camera position. <laughs> but that all worked really well. I didn't have to soak the back with the glue. I just used that basting spray, so that helped. And now I'm making sure I get the creases um, and it folds nicely instead of buckling up. And that's the piece that I selected for um, the spine on the inside. And that piece of fabric is actually a, a pretty thick piece compared to the rest that I have. Although it's supposed to be the same, I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't too worried about getting it all the way to the edge of the fabric because I knew 
I needed to work and make sure that spine is really um, fitted well. I was afraid to use paper because when I bend some of the uh, scrapbook paper I have, it kind of breaks. So I've taken to using fabric. Not that I've made a whole bunch of journals. <laughs> this is um, like the first one using chipboard and a spine. The other ones I've just used cardstock and um, scored them. <laughs> so... I was really scared to do this one, but just take your time and make sure you got good seal everywhere and let the glue dry and it was easy peasy. And here I uh, printed out uh, some of the background pages in the Artie Mays kit, uh, Gothic Glam. I printed it onto, um, I'm trying to remember, it looks like heavy cardstock. I just didn't want the glue to, to warp the thinner cardstock that I have. So I'm making sure I get glue right up to the edges. And then when I'm pressing, I'm making sure that I'm, I'm squishing the glue out to the edges and that I have a good seal there. I don't know if seal is the correct word. <laughs> I just want to make it so that it doesn't come apart, I guess. I can't remember where I got that little scraper thing. Probably uh, Joanne's. Um, and I had another one where it had grooves in it because I was going to use it on my jelly plate. I don't know where it went. Here I've already made a template. Uh, I'm going to have the two signatures. And uh, make sure you do this. Yeah, cross your fingers. <laughs> and I'm just using a thick... Uh, paperback book there um, and making sure I press all the way through all those layers of fabric and the chipboard and make sure you don't uh, poke your fingers here I made sure that I poked it through and then put my fingers around it And I was just indicating a T, so that's the top, so that when I um, use it on the signatures, it'll be in the same position. And here I'm using, um, not using anything, <laughs> I'm arranging the pages where they I want them to be. Um, I am using um, the little punch tool that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Artie Mays made just for me just kidding she made them <laughs> i bought it <laughs> i grabbed it <laughs> as soon as i could because it it does come in handy it makes it so much easier poking through while everything's in place now i should have filmed the first signature because I really struggled with this signature, um, finding the holes. <laughs> and you'll see. Don't laugh. <laughs> the struggle was real, but patience paid off. <laughs> you just kind of have to, like, poke it a little and find the hole and do the next page and the next page. And Maybe one time I was able to go straight through, um, but I think these pages are so weighted down with all the ephemera that those little binder clips just weren't able to hold it in place. And so I had to really search for the holes. This hole is not as bad. The hole coming up, you're really going to laugh. I thought I had it, and then I didn't have it, and I try again. And, you know, I just was worried that I didn't want to uh, 
tearing the pages. Now this one isn't it. It's going to be that middle hole coming back through. You would think everything would be lined up because you already have a string through it, but mine must not have been tight enough to hold it in place. So I'm just fiddling, trying to find the hole and try to find my needle and making sure that everything's poking through. So I'm sorry, you're going to see my head a lot. Thankfully, I covered my, colored my hair not too long ago so you don't see all the gray roots. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So yeah, I thought I had it, and then I didn't, so I start over, and, you know, it's okay. I didn't get mad. <laughs> there we go. I don't know why I didn't poke through into that envelope. That just made it a whole lot harder here. Oh, you see my bruise. I'm sorry. I was in the hospital over um, New Year's Day. <laughs> That's why I spent my New Year's Day in the hospital. So I've got a bunch of holes in my hands and my arms where they did, you know, IVs. I'm okay, though. I'm home. <laughs> and back to crafting. It only took me a day or two to recuperate. So it's all good. But it looks kind of yellow on the screen. So right now I'm just, uh, I had uh, threaded through the other thread, so that's where I'm kind of pulling it back out, and now I'm tightening up the, um, that's a wax leather thread. There we go. Now I'm just double checking and making sure everything's tight, because I didn't want to pull too, too tight and you rip holes. So you kind of got to do it slowly and now making sure everything's fit. I measured correctly. Yay. <laughs> and I didn't sew anything in that I wasn't supposed to, making sure it's not falling out. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. 